for some reason, the A6000 did not record any of the beginning clips from yesterday. And I know for a fact I felt the record button going up and down. So I'm hoping the video clips that I record today or right now actually are in the memory card. And I'm gonna check in a second. I just checked that first one is in the memory card so I'm thinking I'm good for now. I did make a mistake though and I was going to make a mistake yesterday is I forgot to set my shutter speed at 1 1 20th of a second because I have the camera recording at maximum settings at the moment. I believe 1080p by 60 fps and I had the shutter speed at 1 60th so right now I have the shutter at actually 1 1 25th. In case I want to do some slow motion b-roll but I don't know why I would. I would much rather either use the GoPro or my phone to do it. And I don't actually remember if I brought the GoPro or not. If I didn't, then oops, because I realized one thing yesterday, and like I mentioned in the video from yesterday as well, if I'm shooting in, I guess, linear field of view, then GoPro does not shoot the image in broad format, it shoots it in JPEG format. I don't get all the necessary information I need to play with in Lightroom, so I have to go back into wide mode, have the format in raw format. I was gonna go grab some coffee, it's 1040. The bakery that I am going, that I was going to go get the coffee from is not on the way, at least not the route that I take now because the classroom is on the opposite side of campus. I may or, or may not get it after class. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. We will see. I also do want to point out that since I do have the video clips recording on the memory card, that this is going to be a test or a comparison between the steady shot and the 6000 versus the 7 plus in lens or in camera stabilization. I'm at school now, it's 10.50. Some electric car on the highway pissed me off, so I just gunned it. <laughs> Took me a shorter time than I thought to get to school. And for some reason, there was a Volvo SUV. I don't know my Volvo SUV, so I couldn't even tell you the model, but I guess it doesn't really matter. There was one that was parked on the shoulder on the inside, and for some reason, people just like to look. Whenever there's an accident here, people look. Even when the accident happens on the other side, People still like to slow down and look for, for whatever reason, I don't know. It is stupid for one. Two, if you slow down to look at an, op, at an accident that happens on the opposite side, you could be a potential hazard for an accident to happen on your side if you slow down for no reason, just to look. The person in the back can easily, you know, come up behind you and rear end you. I don't understand why when there's an accident on the other side, people look. There's, it's just an accident, like it happens. Like, there's no need to look. All three lanes just came to a halt, and I don't know why. I thought that there was there might have been an accident, because this is the first time in a week and a half. Well, no, today's Tuesday, so a week and two days where I came to school, there was no traffic. But today there, there was because of some person who temporarily parked their car on the shoulder of the highway. It would take me 10 minutes to get to the bakery, it, then that means it would be 11. Get some coffee, you know, five minutes, 11 of five, and get here. Like, I would have plenty of time. It, it's funny here, let me actually show you guys. Take the keys because for some reason when I was loading up my stuff at home, and my face might be zoomed in, but whatever, I don't care. When I was at home loading up my stuff in the car, the car for some reason, I guess the, this car just likes to be really safe, it kept locking the drivers and the passenger doors for whatever reason, it, it was really annoying. Um, even when I pressed it twice to unlock all the doors, the doors will lock again after 30 seconds, which I, I don't know why. I'm parked here now for today, and notice, <laughs> I did not mean for this to happen at all, but I guess I cut it really sharp right here. But there is absolutely no space at all. No space between the tires and the curb. But if you look closely, I don't actually, I'm not actually rubbing the, the side. So the tires are actually, uh, there's maybe a few millimeters between the tires and the rims. But that Mercedes is parked in that corner spot. Um, which obviously means that I couldn't park there. But you know what? I will take this spot. I left plenty of space on this side. Should a car decide to park over the line, I'm still kind of technically safe. Unless if you own a monster truck to some extent and decide to park here for whatever reason, I should not get dotings. Even today, there's still not that many cars. The center section is still empty. That section is still empty. A few more cars here in this corner. Um, in that corner over there on the end, there's 
basically no cars other than the uh, the TSX. This is what I mean by there's basically the steady shot in the A6000 doesn't work. I don't have uh, steady hands, but even with the 7 Plus and steady hands, the footage still looks pretty stable as is. I might pick up a DJI Osmo 2 Mobile if that's the name to really get that footage stable but I know for a fact it won't work with the A6000 because the A6000 body is too heavy for the, the DJ2 but however gimbal for the A6000 even used for one no one's selling a used gimbal and two the cheapest gimbal I found for the A6000 is still 250 bucks and I already shelled out 300 for the GoPro. That's not gonna work. My best bet is to get the gimbal for the 7 Plus, play around with it for you know a year or two, see what happens. So for now, my best bet is just use the tripod on the A6000, make sure my handiwork is stable, and I guess just have to play it that way. But again, this is a comparison between the A6000 and the 7 Plus, and it'll be a testament for myself to see how much more stable the 7 Plus is over the A6000. The footage from after this will be on the iPhone. Today is actually my chill day. Just in case, disclaimer, if my head gets cut off from the bottom, I don't really care anymore because I'd much rather my head be cut off in the bottom than the top. I'm just trying to make my mind get used to having the phone angled more upwards than downwards like that because I know for a fact this way, my head is definitely cut off. With the phone being like this, there's a good chance that my head's not cut off from the top. So people who know me know that I wear jeans 95% of the time. Unless if it's just a day that I don't give a f about, or it's just a day that I don't care and just want to be, you know, chill and laid back. It explains the sweats. <laughs> Usually I do wear a hoodie, but I wear jeans. Today I just thought, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna wear sweatpants because one, it's comfy. Two, it retains heat more than jeans do. That's why I took out the sweats. And because I just did laundry yesterday, I washed these, so I figured, you know what, might as well. Took out the GoPro, but give me one second, I'm gonna boot it up and make sure I have it in the correct settings. Yesterday, um, I had the GoPro in linear mode, if this will, come on. So there's two modes, right? There's a linear, which will not let me shoot in raw because it's grayed out. But then if I go back to wide mode, come on, tap, tap. Come on, GoPro. If I'm in wide mode, raw is turned back on, which means I'm shooting in raw. So now EV comp just for the sake of it, I'm gonna go with zero. And then I'm gonna try actually portrait mode because it, for some reason GoPro says that portrait mode is more for social media, so that's what I'm gonna do. Set the timer for three seconds. There we go. Now that it's set, this is gonna be a pain. Because if I'm holding the GoPro like this, the shutter button is up here. That's gonna be quite a pain. Get the car in the center. I don't know why it's so overexposed. I brought down the shutter to 1 250th. There's a 1 125th. Car is centered. Let's go for it. Take the shot, it looks like this. I'll come back just a bit further so that way I actually crop in when I'm in Lightroom. So, again, a little further back this time. Let's go. Shut and click. Like what I did yesterday, I'm gonna put these photos into Lightroom do a little bit of adjustment. Mostly global. I don't do local adjustment anymore because I, I realized that there's there's no point. And because the um, the GoPro sensor is, is not that good, so there's no point in doing local adjustments anyways because it's gonna blow out the highlights and it's gonna bring in the noise from the shadows. Hopefully it turns out as good as I want it to. I guess I was wrong because the tires are actually on the curb. <laughs> Oops, my bad. I guess I cut it a little too close. But I believe there is still some space on this side as well, but I can't really see because the phone can't really go down that far. It's 11.02, which means um, I do want to get some water, even though my hands are cold, but I feel really thirsty at the moment. So I'm gonna walk down to the cafe, get a bottle of water, and then get back to the car because it's not gonna take me 20 minutes to get a bottle of water. I know that for a fact. I wanted to show you guys what the school looked like from 
up above. I just came down from the stairs and the top floor down to the middle. This is what the school, or at least like that portion of the school looks like from the top here. So yesterday we drove out there towards that direction because that's where the exit is. And this is basically what this section of the school looks like from the top. I wish the one thing that the iPhone can do, and I know for a fact you still can't do it with the 11 Pro Max, is the ability to change the shutter speed and change the f-stop. I say that is because I feel like Apple is more now focusing their iPhone on YouTubers, so yeah. I don't really understand why the default camera app still doesn't allow the user to change the, the shutter speed and the f-stop. I feel like that would be a huge benefit actually to all the YouTubers in general because now that everyone's, well, now that all the successful YouTubers are basically changing iPhones every single year, I feel that it would only be beneficial um, if the default camera app actually allows you to adjust those settings. Now, I don't know if the application, I think it's called Filmic Pro. I think it goes for what, like 25 bucks on the App Store, which is pretty expensive. I'm thinking that that app actually allows you to change the shutter speed and f-stop. Now, the reason why I bring that up, the iPhone can record in 1080p by 60 FPS, even though you can't record in 120 FPS, at least not with the 7 Plus. Um, the best you can do is 720 by 240 FPS. Even recording in 1080p by 60, you can still slow down the video by at least two times and create cinematic scenes with it. Now, the bad part about that is since you can't change the shutter speed, it's going to look really blotchy. Only reason why I know that is because when I went to film at Los Gatos Luxury with the A6000, the maximum, like I said, you can record in is 1080 by 60 and I had a shutter speed at 1 250th just on purpose because I know the maximum for that camera to make it look smooth is 1 1 25th but I purposely put it down to 1 2 50th and then tried to slow it down in Premiere Pro but the problem was it took over five hours to export which for a video that doesn't have color grading and just regular you know splitting combining and whatnot it should not take five hours to export with maybe two hours to upload onto YouTube I think that that's really dumb truth be told with the 11 Pro and with technology so good nowadays I feel like you should be able to change the shutter speed just right from the default camera app. I might be getting the 11 Pro Max soon, I don't know yet. Um, maybe this weekend. Hopefully the in-camera stabilization is a lot better. I'm really tired of not being able to see what I'm recording. Just my thoughts on what they should do for the future iPhones. Just got out of class. Let's see what uh, kind of cars there are today. There's a 335i with a custom plate. I don't know why this person's in the middle of the f***ing road. There's this really nice uh, drift. I don't know, is that S14 or S15? That's clean. I still forget who. I gotta let this Prius out. Why not? I let this guy out. He doesn't even say thank you. Like, come on, I didn't have to let you out. I'm gonna go to that bakery now because I really, really, really want a coffee. For the people who live in Cupertino, here's the trick the size of coffee I get at that bakery. It's basically $2 for a grande size from Starbucks. And we all know a grande is about five, six bucks. Here's traffic heading out from school. Back to what I was saying, you can get a grande sized coffee from that bakery for two bucks, pay six bucks for that size from Starbucks. And the coffee is actually pretty good. I feel like I've been tricked for a good amount of my life. <laughs> Since I learned that I would only pay two bucks for a grande sized from Starbucks. I'm gonna do that for a while. Just got to the bakery and these are actually the coffees that they have. I got the vanilla nut cream. Thank you. This is what I mean by grande sized. So. This is about grande size from Starbucks. Price was literally $1.99. Gotta make sure caps fully sealed. Don't want scorching hot coffee to spill on myself. <laughs> yeah, I've done that once, not fun. For me, getting a, let's say a grande salted caramel hot chocolate with soy milk. Uh, soy milk is an additional 70 cents, I think. That's what makes it five and a half, six bucks, but it doesn't matter because even if, even without 
the soy milk substitute, it's still around five bucks, right? And that's nearly three times more than how much this costs. This literally was $1.99. I gave them $2 and I just told them to keep the cent because I don't use coins. For those of you who live in Cupertino, I know we have a lot of Starbucks here. I guess you could call this a trick or a hack. This thing is $2 and it's just as good. There's just not that many options. There's five types of coffee, as you guys just saw in the previous clip. If you guys like hazelnut or uh, vanilla, or I think it was Hawaii Kona blend, then um, yeah, then I guess this could settle it for you if you want a Starbucks substitute. I have to think about what to get for lunch because I have to get something for the parents as well. I don't know what to get yet. I'm hungry, but I don't know where to go. We are getting I heard bento, which is also in Cupertino, but just down at another direction. Now from that place, no one knows. I only get teriyaki chicken, but for some reason today, I, I just want to try something different. Getting their fried shrimp, I try not to eat fried stuff other than popcorn chicken, which is also fried. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the breading off of the outside of the shrimp and just eat the shrimp by itself. Gonna try that because I've never gotten fried shrimp before from them and I didn't know that they actually served fried shrimp before. That'll be interesting. I'll see you guys back at home. I'm gonna end the video right here, but I've got one question for you guys and comment down below what you guys think. My parents says she believes that we can fit my car on the driveway with, I don't know the perspective right now, but with this car and that car. She thinks that it is possible to fit the length of the driveway with three cars. Tell me what you guys think, because I spent a little bit of time eyeing it yesterday, and I don't think it's possible to fit all three cars on the driveway. If the RX was a little smaller, or if the Model 3 was a little smaller, maybe? I doubt it. I, I don't think that's possible. Let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you guys tomorrow.